Hey everybody, it's Julie Quinn here, and I'm going to share with you a video on alignment and contrast based on the cupcake websites that um, you've been reviewing. So compare your responses to mine. Um, you should have posted your responses already. It'll be interesting what we see that's similar and um, what we may disagree on or maybe did not see in our own evaluations. And so starting with the Toronto Cupcake website, um, this is a fairly um, uh, bland and minimalist kind of website. It doesn't look like the, um, the company, uh, spent a lot of money in website design. Um, but let's take a look. If we talk, start starting with alignment. That's where items on a page are set up, uh, in a consistent position. Okay. So we've got the headers. The headers are centered. Some of these headers are in pink. Some of them are in all caps and, and, and not in the pink border. Um, but if we just look at the front page, um, there is some alignment here. We really only have like one image and it's set in the middle and all of the headers are set in the middle. And so we've sort of got this middle line that runs down the page that everything is set, is set off of. However, when you look at the text that starts below the, the series of headers and images, we've got what's called, um, uh, looks to me like left justification. It's hard to 100% tell because lines aren't wrapping, but that's when instead of this content being centered, it's on that left margin. And we do see some alignment, at least with the margins on the page, that there is some white space and boundary there. So this is a pretty simple website. Now let's look at Wicked Good Cupcakes. <laughs> Let me get uh, out of the, nope, I'm not going to sign up and look at the dynamic difference with this website. We've got a, um, a banner at the top that says as seen on, and we've got all these different, um, how popular we are. We've got the title centered. We've got a series of tabs, um, that, that lead to, uh, different spaces on the website. We've got the image. Um, like a scrolling uh, set of images for the website. Titles are generally centered. We can see that with the title of the website and the title of this page. We have this image, this sort of um, changing picture frame image um, uh, centered as well. But then we've got this um, image, the their um, uh, marketing for pride. Um, and we've got some text that is left justified but it's centered toward the right side of the page. You can see this border is straight and this border is jagged. That's normally how we do that in, an, in, in academic writing documents as well. You can see though um, that alignment isn't exactly uh, uh, perfect, right? This is the border of the image. Actually, let's go all the way to the top here. Yep, this is a consistent border right here where you've got this nice, uh, white space and it's balanced with the same amount of white space. And that's a good document design in general when the white space on either side is the same. You'll notice that for some of you, I made comments on writing assignment number two, and I had said, be careful um, about um, uh, making sure your border, you don't want the page to end right here and have just that tiny border. It looks like the images, the text can run off the page. But there's just a tiny bit, you may not have even noticed that, but there's a tiny bit of a lack of alignment on that left side margin. But then these guys are aligned consistent, consistently, and you've got these images stretched across the page, and you have the same amount of white space in between each. And so that repetition, that similarity is pleasing to the eye. There's also... Um, uh, some interest, and then you've got the same sets of images, and it looks like the margins are now moved over. So for the rest of the page, um, uh, the margin goes down. As far as alignment, look at the titles of these. These titles are on the left and not centered over each section, and everything is on the left margin. So we do have some alignment. Um, if we think about like the center of the page, the one thing that goes off of that is that this image encroaches past the center of the page, which is right here. And then as we go up, we still then have the center. So it's, th this page is mostly aligned. This page is, seems to be entirely aligned, but this page is so simplistic that alignment alone doesn't give us like the full picture, right? So one of the other features or principles that you're looking at, right? Um, in addition to alignment is contrast. This is an easy one. <laughs> contrast is the use of um, a color scheme 
uh, in this case for this website that um, allows text or images to pop off of the page. I once had a student submit um, uh, information on an assignment uh, with white text and a lime green uh, or with a white background and lime green text and there wasn't enough contrast because the white is actually pretty bright. You can see that the general contrast colors are white and black. White background, dark or black text, that makes the text just really easy to read. So that's a clear contrast. Um, and uh, but there's nothing fancy on this website, but you can see contrast is fairly well used um, because they didn't choose a light color for the text, for example, or a super pastel. This is a darker, I mean, it's a pastel pink, but it's a darker pastel. If they went really light, then that um, uh, would blend into the background and be harder to read. Now, let's talk about contrast on Wicked Good, Wicked Good Cupcakes. So you can see here, they're also using white and um, black, but with pops of red and pink pink in the background, mostly pink in the background of that prior image, the rainbow images for um, Pride Month. Um, then we've got the yellow images. So in this sort of uh, picture frame scroll, pink was the first image color, but lots of bright colors. Um, uh, black text, white background. Black text and white background is the most common way you're going to see content on a website and on academic papers too, right? Because you're, you're normally, when you're in Word, you have that white background, white pieces of paper when you, when you print out uh, uh, physical documents. And so um, that's a good sort of translation from, from the text work we do as technical writers to the work that we do um, in technical writing when the writing exists on the web in some fashion. Um, so what's also nice about contrast is that these buttons really contrast against the white background to the red buttons. Um, you'll notice that there's a little bit of an inconsistency, which we can talk about. Um, this button is italic, but these buttons are in, in, in regular, in all caps, regular text font. So there's a tiny bit of inconsistency on this website, but not enough to be really egregious. Just a little bit. Um, you know, uh, some of the other elements, um, uh, when we talk about um, those park principles, um, when you talk about like repetition, um, uh, this would be, this is good repetition, right? Um, so one of the other little things that I noticed on this website, and I'll probably mention it when we talk about those other principles, is if you think about repetition, um, you think about repetition style, all of these images are squared, but for some reason this image is, is curved a little bit. So yeah, so there are some little tiny elements of inconsistency um, on this website, but this website is just so much more dynamic than the other. It sort of can be, I guess, um, forgiven those little things. So you can see how contrast is used. You can see how um, alignment is used on these websites. Um, and I hope that my mini discussion here helps you understand the concepts and I'll be curious to see where we differentiate in our discussion.